Hi there, Fabricio here. This is an example on how to take advantage of Houdini's uh, procedural environment to create your own uh, texture generators inside COPS in the likes of uh, Substance Designer. Okay, so in the last days I've been watching two videos. The first one is this one from Mike Linden, is an Ilum webinar uh, where he talks about COPS and explains some of the nodes available. And the second one is this uh, amazing uh, video from Alexander where he goes through a uh, texturing tool he made inside COPS and generated the, this beautiful detailed uh, brick texture. Okay, so that gave me some ideas and uh, I get back to Houdini and I try to explore some workflows and I believe I have reached this uh, smooth uh, tight uh, workflow to create this kind of uh, textures. So uh, here you can see uh, if you uh, go to this import uh, bricks node you can see you have a brick generator here it's a very simple brick generator but you can play with like row number of rows and columns and we can also set a uh, brick size and we can play with uh, the colors and give it some variation and stuff like that it also has this image resolution uh, parameter where you can uh, define the size of the output of your texture so right now uh, we have uh, third uh, 35, uh, 350 by 350, and um, this this actually is the subdivision of uh, of the grid. We will see in a moment. But for now, let's try to up the value to 500, and you can see it takes about like two or three seconds. And if you update the the resolution from SOPS, we have a 5K by 5K texture, so it's really really fast. Uh, so the idea here is that you have this um, object network inside your COP network and this will be one generator. Uh, so this has three components. The main one is a 3D scene where you build your 3D stuff. Uh, the second one is a ray tracer where you should raise down and look up for attributes. And the third one is just for, uh, for, for just a domino that imports the result of the ray, of the ray tracer and that shortens the path, the relative paths you have to use outside the node. So if we go to the 3D scene here, I have this simple uh, grid with some boxes that resembles a brick structure. And I have uh, some parameters that I want to export that uh, for, for the, the planes and I have height that is like a bump map. I have this mask bricks and a color and we can visualize those here. So CD or mask bricks where you can separate the bricks and also I have a point attribute called height which represents more of a, a bump map so I have some variation in the height of the bricks and with that in place we go back one level and go to the ray tracer and the ray tracer has this uh, first initialization node that is a simple grid where I have the dimensions for, for the 2D plane and below that we have uh, we work with two two dimensional volumes that just like the terrain tools and for that I'm using also standard namings from the COP uh, network so you set, you see C for color uh, A for alpha height and mask bricks are two custom uh, custom planes and uh, I also chain them uh, together so that I get the dimensions from the previous uh, item. So all of them have the same width and height and also the same uh, divisions. Okay, so uh, with that in place, you can see that I have my four uh, two-dimensional volumes. And from now on, I have to import the 3D scene and just do a simple ray trace uh, volume wrangle where I uh, just intersect a geometry and transfer the attributes from the hit positions. So uh, we can visualize that here on the, this visualize node. So we are seeing color now, we can see the height and also the mask bricks. And we can also play with that grid. We can reposition that, rotate and rescale if you want to. I just make it uh, like a square ratio. And then uh, if we go back to uh, two levels to the COP network, we have this SOP import node. If we go to the composite view, we can see uh, if we point to the, our, the result of our ray tracer, it will go through all the 2D volumes. And if you set resolution and planes from the SOP, it will import that to your composite view. Okay, so you have height, height and mask bricks. So with that, uh, 
and made this this little uh, visualization tool that creates a mosaic with all the available planes for us. And this is uh, it's not complicated. Uh, it just uh, first thing is I add this little tag with the name of the plane. is a, a sub network with some nodes, uh, and it reads the parent nodes, strips out the out uh, parts, so like city, and then puts that as a plane uh, as a as a name. Okay, so little little token just to see what we are uh, what you are seeing. And here, if we uh, I just channel copy all the planes to the color. So here's the alpha. Here's the uh, height, and here's the bricks. Okay, so if we input all of that into a switch node and use frame as an index, index, index sorry. Uh, then we can uh, input that into mosaic and it to create this nice uh, like texture sheet for us. Okay, so the bit of it is that it's very easy to add another channel if you like to. Just go back to our uh, generator in the scene. I will add the parameter I want to use. In this case, I have already this uh, this attribute wrangle that sets a random color, and we can visualize that in our scene view here. If you go to uh, primitive and set that to rent color so we have that that you can use to add some hue variation to our shaders or any, anything we want to do in our composite view so i have that uh, already in place so here's our hand, hand color uh, attribute then go back to ray tracer and i believe here there is lots of uh, room for uh, for automation uh, like you can do all, all this kind of uh, attribute uh, querying automatically. I'm thinking about other ways to do that right now, but for for this one, let's make it. Uh, let's do it manually. So I'm just du duplicating this volume. Let's connect that and add to the merge. I'm I'm going to call that rent color, and I'm also getting the names from the operative string as you can see here. And this is the type vector as it's a color. So the last step is to. Uh, Query the attribute from the ray trace. So let's copy from the color. Um, let's call that ran color. Ran color. And we can finally finally visualize that here. Just go to ran color, and there's our new plane. So just go back to our uh, cop network composite view. And uh, if we have to uh, set planes from SOP again, because it is going to read all the planes and put inside here. So just hit that. And then you can already see we have the random colors uh, plane here. Okay, so I'm going to add one more row to this visualization thing. So add one more. This is going to be called rent color. And from here, I'm going to source, source the rent color uh, Plane. Okay, so add the tag and put plug in the, into the switch. And here, uh, so here we have to change for the color again. Otherwise, we are seeing all the same plane. So now we have one more plane, and uh, it took about like one minute to do so. So it's very fast workflow. And uh, now. What is interesting here is that you can uh, expand on this library of generators and then uh, put that into a digital asset so you have like a big library of generators you, you can use everywhere in your in your scene so in this case here I can uh, like set send that back to the sub plane so let me get back the headlight uh, on the viewport and here I have a grid and an attribute from from uh, from map where I query the the texture from the cop uh, network using the op syntax so I query the height and the color and I use that to deform and color a simple grid as you can see here and also we can uh, use that of course inside uh, a material and see at the render, render time so I have, here I have this uh, flat grid with uh, UVs and if you go back to our material I have some material set up for redshift here and this uh, queries on the texture sampler, sampler it queries uh, with the op syntax uh, the color and the height from uh, the cop network and those um, 
are input into the, the material and you Redshift will use that for rendering of uh, for displacements and, and colors and stuff like that okay I changed my camera let me get back okay so you can see here and it all works and a quick tip here is that if you want to see your uh, textures in the viewport uh, just go to your VOP material network and edit parameter interface and just add this file image uh, parameter and give that any name uh, doesn't matter and just uh, click this built-in tags and input that texture uh, tag here okay once you do that uh, Houdini knows that this this is where it should put uh, the texture to display in the OpenGL okay so uh, so I think I think that's it uh, I believe this is a very very interesting way to uh, create uh, textures from inside cop networks and also it can be easily expandable uh, so you can just uh, copy that do another another stuff with, with the 3d scene here and you have another generator then just uh, promote some parameters to the main interface and you have you can have that all inside the library and uh, then you can just put into a digital asset and send to another artist okay so um, I really hope side effects can evolve uh, this kind of stuff because uh, it really uh, is, is very powerful. So uh, maybe they can like try and build some uh, some more nodes like that for us in the future. It will be very welcome. And uh, well, that's it. Uh, let me know what you what you think. If you have any suggestions to improve this workflow, and uh, see you in the next video. Bye.